I love that song. You know, it says that he delivered me to stand and sing that I am the child of God. In other words, he delivered us to do more than just go to church. And everybody said, amen. I got a text message. It's weird. My phone don't always, or my iPad don't always get text messages, but it did this morning. It's from Miss Paula. Miss Paula said, good morning. Not going to be able to make it there this morning for church. Would you please announce that our women's ministry, Sisterology, will be meeting at the movie theater at 3.30 to watch Life Mark. It is a movie by the Kendrick Brothers about adoption and is only there for a limited time. Tickets are twelve fifty each. And she said that men's ministry is welcome. They didn't leave us out. Hallelujah. You didn't bring a wig? You'll pass, Curry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Got a couple more announcements. Our youth this coming Saturday. Listen, y'all. Our youth, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m., meet and greet here at the church. All of our youth, I, 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 need y'all to, I need to hear you, mom and daddies. All of our youth are going to meet and bring your friends with you. We got another church that's coming, and we're going we're gonna to greet and meet with an, another youth group. Amen? Time to love on somebody. I said it's time to love on somebody. Amen. And don't forget that we're still collecting underwear. I know when they, <laughs> when they, do I? New underwear, yeah, please make sure they're new. <clears throat> In the package wrap would be nice. And, uh, you know, when this was, first, when I first heard about this, I'm like, that is so unusual. But then I got to talking about, talking to different people in the education. Uh, this seems to be an epidemic problem. With the little guys, you know, they mess up their pants. They don't have no spares. That, so we, we, de- we deliver them to the school so the kids will have some. But watch this. I, I, I was talking to somebody from out of town that's in the um, education, and, and she was telling me that is phenomenal. I'm going straight to my pastor with this because she teaches small kids too. She said, I never thought about a church being, that being a ministry for them. And I'm like, she said, this epidemic, it, it's bad because some of them will come, don't even have drawers on. And the, and the favorite line is, well, mama just ain't washed yet. I don't know about you, but if it was my child, i get in the bathtub and wash them for them. They'll have some, amen. But again, it's an it's a opportunity to reach our community, amen. So we just took several hundred pair out last week to um, to start filling the schools up. So please, when you go to town, you you're shopping, just pick up a pack, boys, girls, for for the little guys, you know, up to about third grade or so, fourth grade, and um, make sure there's there is boys there too, and they need them. Too. <laughs> Amen. How, how many come to receive today? Hold your Bible up, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. This is God's Word. I believe it, and I choose to receive it. I'm not just a hearer, but therefore a doer. Now plant the Word. And everybody said, today I have the burden of preaching probably one of the most important messages that I will ever preach. And I'm going to need your help. Do I got anybody out here that'll help me today? I said, do I have anybody out here that'll help me today? You know I'm an audience participation preacher, right? And the hard part about this message is not hard to preach. It is to get you to understand and believe it for yourself. Amen? We've started a little series on I'm in. Playing off of I in. Last week we talked about I'm invited. Somebody say I'm invited. This week we're going to talk about I'm invaluable. Next week we're going to talk about I'm influential. And last but not least, we're going to talk about I'm invested. Come on. So invaluable, let's let's dissect that just a moment. Invaluable 
And, and I think it, it really is one of those things that we don't look at ourselves invaluable to nothing. Come on. What does that mean? That means I'm priceless. I'm indispensable. And I'm irreplaceable. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm irreplaceable. I am. I am. But watch, the, de- the devil wants to throw this that you're not valuable. You know, the Bible says you're called. You're, you're chosen. And you're capable. And you're invaluable to God. You meant so much to him that he sent his very best for you to die in your stead. And everybody said. But what happens in church is a lot of times we don't feel valued. Help me. We actually feel the opposite of what the Bible says about us. Because we'll run across those people that can quote all the scriptures in the Bible. Come on. That are more qualified and and so forth. But can I tell you something? The devil wants to tell you you're not good enough. You're not talented enough. You're not important. And you really don't matter. That your past is too bad for for God to even think about using you. Until he makes you feel totally and completely unworthy. And you don't know enough. This is probably one of the biggest struggles and the biggest lie that is sold in the body. Come on. Is that we don't know enough. To share. And then the enemy says, well, you know what? It wouldn't matter if you're there or not. It really wouldn't matter. If I didn't show up, who would care? (laughs) Paul writes a metaphor in the Bible in in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You will turn there with me because this metaphor is vital to understand what God has in store for each of us. I pray you'll give me your spiritual ear. Matter of fact, I just pray that you give me a moment. Let's pray together. Now, Father, I ask that these words today be ordered from heaven, spoken over clay lips that you form. That every ear here today, that everyone that's here and those that are watching by live stream, Hear your voice today. That they not see Mark, but they see you. And we give you the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, Paul pens these words. He says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. He uses a metaphor of a human anatomy to, to bring forth and paint a picture of what the body of Christ should look like. Amen. I'm going to give you some, some here, and I need your help right here. If, if you have a group of elephants, what are they called? Come on, say it out loud if you know it. A herd, right? So if you have a group of lions, what are they called? A pride. If you have a group of cheetahs, not Cheetos, a group of cheetahs, what are they called? Coalition of cheetahs. That's what they're called. A group of donkeys, boop, boop, be careful. Y'all be careful. I know somebody, I already, I, I already know. If you had a group of donkeys, what are they called? A pace. Y'all ready? Now, if you have a group of crows, what do you have? A murder. That sounds like a scary movie, don't it? The crows. Watch this. 
What if you have a group of vultures? What are they called? A committee. That's why we don't have committees voting on stuff. A bunch of vultures voting on something, right? Let me show you the amazing thing here. Each one of these individually had one identity. But as a group, they had a whole different identity. It's like the body of Christ. If somebody sold out to God and, and they've surrendered their life to God, we call them a Christ follower. But when they come into a room full of of people that are sold out to God, we have now the body of Christ. Our identity changes because we come together. But individually, we're, follow we're followers of Christ. Come on. I don't know about you, but I, I, I love my, my new identity more than I do my old identity. Some people are so in love with their old identity, they can't never get to their new one. Pastor just said, I just preached the whole message, we can go home. Because so many people are so in love with their old identity. Oh, wow, I don't know about that, Pastor. I mean, they talk about they've been delivered and all that, but they can't quit talking about it. They can't, can't quit living it. Because they're still in love with it. Somebody say, together we are the body of Christ. We make up the church. 320 Fussell Road does not make the church. Us in the church, the body of Christ, makes up the church. And everybody said, <laughs> see, where we go and we serve, his hands go. Wherever we go, his feet go. Y'all with me today? Why? Because we are invaluable part of the body of Christ. And every part matters. Every part matters. Somebody say every part. Every part. Now, come on, y'all going to have to say it with me because I'm going to mess y'all up here in a little bit. I'm setting you up for, for a show enough mess up, okay? Every part matters. In verse 14, 1 Corinthians 12, he says, Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does that not make it any less a part of the body? And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, Picture that in your mind. Whole lot of seeing but no hearing. Whole lot of seeing but no speaking. Whole lot of seeing but no doing. Whole lot of seeing but no going. Whole lot of seeing but no serving. Come on. How would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? Somebody say, every part matters. Every part matters. I love what Paul did. He contrasted the, the ear and the eye. H have you ever heard of anybody just falling in love with someone, and they just glare into their ear and say, oh, what beautiful ear you have. Somebody say, Amen. <laughs> Come on. Come on, right? And last I checked, I've never heard of nobody having an ear to ear conversation. I've never seen a movie that says for your ears only. Beauty is in the ear of the beholder. You've got bedroom ears. You're the apple of my ear. 
but the devil will sit here and try to tell you you're not important. When every part of the body matters, every part of the body matters. In verse 22, he says, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. I'm going to give you a, something here, and I know I'm going to slaughter one word here. I, I'll probably hear it from my doctors over here. And anyway, your pinky finger. You know your pinky finger is over 50, the smallest one. You know, we got a thumb, we got a pointing finger, and we got another finger, and we got a ring finger, and the pinky, the one we don't talk about, it is over 50% of the strength in your hand comes from your pinky. Y'all with me? The one that seems to be the least is carrying 50% of the load. Y'all help me today, y'all. Uvula, did I say it right? Uvula, that little thing back down in your throat, that, that little punching bag, you know, that blah, 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 blah. in a lifetime produces enough slobber to fill up two swimming pools. So, I mean, if you're having a rough day, jump in the pool. Come on, y'all. I mean, every part of the body has a purpose. Armpit hair has a purpose. I mean, well, listen, listen. We all got it unless you got something done there. But anyway, we all got it. You know what it's for? <laughs> y'all re ready? It's to diffuse the natural scent of a male to attract a mate. Don't be smelling. Now, I know he didn't just not do that. Everybody back. <laughs> if I have to scratch your head and check yourself, that's okay too, right? <clears throat> Y'all with me? Y'all just messed me up. I don't even know where to go here now. Everybody back here checking themselves. I mean, am I tracking the mate? You better be single if you are. <laughs> See, sometimes what we do may be invisible to others and invisible actually to ourselves. Come on. You don't realize you've swallowed two swimming pools full of saliva, have you? It's invisible to ourselves. Without it, you would be in trouble. Come on. It has a purpose. Just because it's not visible doesn't mean that it's not important. Yes. How many know who the Gideons are? Yeah, it's, if you've stayed in a hotel, it's a good possibility you've opened up a drawer and there's a Bible there. And they come from the Gideons. I, I solely support the Gideons. I think they do a great work. They'll also go to college campuses and hand out Bibles, even if they're spat on and, and mocked and made fun of. Their mission, their part of the body, is to make sure everybody has the gospel in their hand. I wish they'd get away from the King James Version so we can, we can get hithers and tithers and get behind us. But their part of the body of Christ is to give everybody a Bible and put it in their hand. And everybody said, I mean, even when they know that when they walk away, they probably will throw it in the garbage. They did their part. We as the body of Christ all have a part. And it's amazing to me. I mean, I've been serving God long enough now there's some things that I've sowed seeds in I've never seen a harvest of. I don't know what has happened. 
I, I just know that I sowed. And I sowed, whether it be, whether it be time or, or, or sowed into them personally or, or financially or physically or spiritually and, and not see a return. Sometimes we get discouraged because we want to see revival in somebody's life. When the Bible says that there's some that sow, some that water, and some that reap. And then we'll get frustrated. Y'all, y'all with me? Somebody say, I'm called. Oh, no, I need the church to say, I am called. Come on, say it like you really mean it. I am called. I'm chosen, I am capable, I'm invaluable to God's work. Let, let me tell you, when I got saved and, and I was going to church, thank God my pastor saw something in me that I didn't see in me. He started having me to hand out bulletins. And you got to know, I didn't like people. And I mean that, and when I say that, that's not to be funny. I didn't like people because I didn't trust people because all people's ever done is hurt me, walked out of my life, and abandoned me. But yet he wanted me to greet. I got people in the building today that has known me for 25 years that will tell you, when you walked into church with Mark there, you got greeted. You got loved. That was a season of my life that God changed, not knowing where God was taking me and what he was equipping me for. But I know that I know the little thing. I just wanted somebody to feel welcome like I did. This is my house. This is my church. I belong to this body. And I'm going to try to make this body as healthy as I can make it. I need somebody to help me today. I want this body to be happy, full of joy, full of peace. So I'm going to make you welcome. And that was my mission. If I missed you in the foyer, I'd walk through praise and worship, hugging on you, loving you, telling you, good to see you today. Love you. I love you. I love you. I didn't know he was going to change my heart and actually make me care about people. Let's alone love them. And everybody said I, I, at the time, I didn't think what I was doing was important. But years to come, I would hear from people. I, I, I remember that little short fat boy that always, always full of joy and full of, and don't know there was hell going on on the inside. But I was still giving out because this joy I have, the world didn't give it. And the world cannot take it away. And if I can do anything, I'm going to share what God's given me. Everybody say amen. So to be part of the body, we all have to engage. We all have to get involved. (laughs) There went them spiritual breaks. I just heard some some skidding going on. Yeah, preaching power. Oh, wait a minute. That means we all got to engage. We got to all get involved, and we all got to serve. Everybody's got to love somebody. Somebody help me. We all got to contribute to to the work of God. And everybody said. So if we're not doing that, then something's being left undone that God wants done. Come on. One thing I can say about LifeSpring, since this church started 22 years ago, 22 years ago, two months ago, is it's always been founded on love. If you don't feel welcome here, you won't never be feel welcome nowhere. Why? Because God is love and love is God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And them out there will know us in here or of him up there by the love we show one to another. And the church said, amen. Can I ask you a question? How how many in here has ever fell asleep, you know, 
I don't know how you sleep, but anyway, and you fall asleep and, and you get up and your arm's asleep, won't wake up, and you're trying to, I mean, to the point it's paralyzed. So see, if part of the body is sleeping, it's paralyzed, and it's not doing what it is intended to do. So when the body is not all in one accord, in one mind, going the same direction. I don't know about you, but I hate it when my arm falls asleep and I'm having to carry this thing. Mm. Then when you get old, old, other things go to sleep so you don't jump out of bed real quick. Make sure they're awake before you hit the floor. That's a fact. When one is asleep, the rest of the body is working harder. And something's not being accomplished that should be. There's a need that's not being met. There's a life that's not being changed. And there's somebody going to hell because the body's asleep. I don't know how God can use me, Pastor. You don't understand. You you you, You don't know my past. It's my past. I lost a marriage. I I failed financially. I wasn't the best parent in the world. See, your past doesn't disqualify you. It prepares you. I said it prepares you. Well, Pastor, I partied hard when I was younger. Ooh, Lord, let me tell you some stories. I don't want to hear them. Because we might have found out we was at the same party. I can't pastor a church. I was addicted. I was strung out. What can I do? All it's doing, baby, is equipping you. You understand now somebody's testimony. You know some, what something has happened to somebody. So, so look... My marriage failed. I can't leave. You're the perfect person to help somebody heal. I don't know enough. If you know Jesus and you love people, you know all you need to know. I said, if you love Jesus and you love people, you know everything you need to know. I don't know the Beatitudes. I don't know the Pentateuch. I don't know the right scriptures. I don't know where are the right prayers. I don't know what to say when they ask a question. I do. Go to Jesus. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. All I need to do is love on you. Come go to church with me. What can I help you with? Our problem is we want to give everybody scripture, and we don't even work, walk them out ourselves. You're going to hell. I've been addicted, Pastor, to drugs. I can't minister. You've just been prepared for ministry. It's not about your ability. Get this today. It is not about your ability. If it was about ability, I would never be here. It's about your availability. I may not have been what God expected, but he said, you'll do. Because I said, yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. You open the door, I'll walk in it. And everybody said, now I'm going to drive one home that I need you to write down in your notes today. Don't put it on your phone. Put it on your social media status today. Your presence matters. Your presence matters. What if you wake up in the morning and your eyes don't open up? Your eyelids quit working. Eyes are in there, but you can't see nothing. Somebody say your presence matters. Your presence matters. It matters to the heart of God. It's one of those things that that just is the heart of God. It matters to him. 
Y'all, y'all with me? So I'm going to show up here in a minute. Y'all ready? Mm. Mm. Your worship matters. This side of the church, how many of y'all like to see a move of God? No, I mean a move of God. How about this section? How about this section? How about this section? We, they want to see a move of God. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about a move of God that crackheads come and lay their crack pipes on the altar and get them walk off. Lay their guns down and pick up a Bible and, and go out into the streets and evangelize. Who would like to see a move of God? It doesn't happen without your worship. Your worship. He says when we send up praise, he sends down his anointing. Your presence matters. Your worship matters. Somebody say amen. Watch, watch, watch this. Some people, well, even if I wasn't, if I don't show up, it don't matter. Ain't nobody going to miss me no how. If I have a family gathering, every Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's my day in our family. That's my house. I don't care where you have Christmas. I don't care where you have Father's Day. We doing Thanksgiving in my house. Every year, now watch, I got two children, two biological children. I got a bunch of children. There's one, there's one, there's one. There's two or three, four, five back there. I got them everywhere. I got a bunch of children, but, but I have two biological children, and they're both married. It's not complete unless they all show up. Something's missing. Watch, 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 watch. I ain't finished here now. It's okay that my children show up. But don't let my grandchildren show up. It's incomplete. I have a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law. If they don't show up, it's incomplete. Something is missing. So when the body of Christ, our presence matters, when we're not there, what happens is it's incomplete. Well, it don't matter if I show up or not. It matters. Why does it matter? Your story matters. Your gifts matter. Your voice matters. Your generosity matters. Your words to somebody matters. And your encouragement to others matters. I mean, just imagine how boring church would be if Curry didn't show up. Some of y'all will get it here in a minute. Why? Because Curry is always up. And he doesn't, he doesn't have thin skin. He gives it out, but he takes it. And always full of love. And the church said, I mean, just think about it. Well, yeah, I know it, but he's the drummer. If we don't have the drummer, we don't have music. Baby, we got drums right here. We got drums right here. We don't have to have them. We want them. And we need them. And we want him. And we need him. Why? He's the body of Christ. He belongs. He's part of the family. And everybody said... Somebody say, your presence matters, and your worship matters. Man, there's something about a unified body of believers coming together to worship, and that man just brings in an atmosphere of anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. And, and let's, let me tell you something. It makes my job 150 times easier because a lot of times I can just sit down in a chair and let them keep worshiping. I, I love it. Amen. So, see, when, when we give an offering... Your gift makes a difference. When you pray a prayer, your faith moves the heart of God. When you invite someone to church, your invitation could change a life. So what we do matters. It matters to the heart of God. When you greet someone when you listen to someone, when you open your home up to someone, 
When you make somebody a meal, you are showing the love of Jesus. The Bible says, what you do to the least of these, you're doing unto me. Imagine if we did our part. I want you to catch this. If we did our part as the body of Christ, and he did his part, y'all with me? All things would be possible if we would do our part and he would do his part. Understanding that our presence matters and our worship matters. And let him do his part. I want you to think about what what's possible. How many meet needs would be met in our community and all over this world? Come on, y'all. I don't know about you, but I believe that if the body of Christ was doing their part and God did his part, we did what we're supposed to be. We could do so much to impact our community, our state, and our country. It's so much more than just going to church and singing, this is the day that the Lord hath made. When there's a world out here dying in need of a Savior, there's a prostitute about ready to take her life today. While we sit back and sing. There's a mama that's at her wits end. Single mother that cannot. Don't know how she's going to make it. How she's going to pay the power bill. How she's going to put underwear on her baby. We need a body that's doing the will of God. So that we can impact. If we were all doing what God called us to do, we'd be able to mentor high-risk children. Not only to help them read and write, but able to feed them spiritually, physically. We'd be able to get water to those that need water. Food. To those who really need food. And be able to help those that are hurting. Every widow and elderly person could have their needs met. Y'all with me? We could stop people being alone and committing suicide. If the body's doing what the body's supposed to do. We could have a community that could feel the love of God through a a faithful body of Christ. Every foster child would have the privilege of a loving family. Y'all help me. And every, every pregnant young girl that gets pregnant out of wedlock would have a sanctuary. Y'all ain't with me, so y'all get, now y'all just got religious and pious on me. You're polishing your halo over there. Come on. Every person that's trapped in addiction would be able to find freedom in Christ. Y'all help me. Every lost person in our community could hear the love of Christ. Through God's people. Come on. See, because our feet deliver the good news. Our hands offer the help to those without. God's word brings hope to the hurting. You are the body of Christ. 
You are. You're invaluable to God. Your presence matters. Why do you think you can go all week long and not have a problem? Sunday morning, you're going to fuss, fight, and argue to get to church. Why? He wants, you to, he wants to rob, steal, and kill you from being in the presence of God. And everybody said, let me tell you a story. I'm going to read you a story. How many know who Babe Ruth is? You know, he was back in the 20s, but we all know who he is, right? Pretty important fellow, wasn't he? He made a lot of history. Babe Ruth is, to this day, considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, home run slugger of all time. During his career, the great Bambino autographed many baseballs, but he only put his name on seven of the bats he used to hit home runs. Because he autographed so few, each of these bats is exceptionally valuable. The first of the bats vanished into, the, into thin air, lost for literally decades. Only when it resurfaced in 2006 was it, its story discovered. The bat was used to hit a home run in the Yankee Stadium against the Boston Red Sox on April 18, 1923. It was given away by Ruth's agent as a prize in a home run contest. No one at the competition got any contact information from the winner. So when he left with his bat, it disappeared from the public's eye. In 1988, the man was sick and on his deathbed, losing the battle to a prolonged illness. He had outlived every member of his family, and his clo closest friends was a faithful nurse who would served him for years during his sickness. Before he died, the man presented his nurse with his prized autographed bat. Although his gesture carried great sentimental value, she had no idea its actual worth. For the next 18 years, she kept it under the bed. After retiring from nursing, she hoped to open a restaurant, but she didn't have any money. One day, she thought of her bat and wondered if it might be worth something. She took it to a local sports memorabilia shop to have it appraised. When the owner suspected it might be the missing Babe Ruth bat, he brought in several experts. After hearing her story and carefully testing its, testing its condition and provenance, they determined it was the real deal. In 2006, she auctioned off the bat through... Uh, Sotheby's uh, for almost $1.3 million. The woman, kept, the woman kept only as much of the money as she needed to start her restaurant, then gave the rest to, to begin a foundation to serve the children Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth wanted to help at the end of his life. When a reporter asked her why she, she would give away so much of her money, she answered, the bat was only valuable because Babe, Ruth, Babe Ruth's name was on it. Since he made it valuable, the only reasonable thing I could do was some, something that would honor his life. See, if you're a Christian, what makes you valuable is the name of Jesus written on your heart because of what he did for us on the cross. Our only reasonable response is to do something with our life that honors him. And everybody said, somebody say, I'm invaluable. See, see that's hard for us to, 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 to wrap our, our, our mind around. Invaluable. We're all part of the body of Christ. Jesus penned a story in the Bible that if a a, her, a sheep herder had a hundred sheep and one took off that he would leave the 99 to go after the one. I got a lot of shoes. Ain't quite, quite got a hundred pair, but I, I'm working on it. 
if I lost one pair of them shoes, it wouldn't be no big deal. Y'all with me? If I lost one pair, it wouldn't be a big deal. But if I could just go get another one. Y'all with me? But we're so invaluable to God that he doesn't want to lose none. That everyone, see, I, I've seen people run from God, and then God, they get out there for a few months, and boy, and God will pop, snatch them back. Because he done left the 99 to go after the one. You are so important to him. You are so important to him. And we are important to him. We are important to the body of Christ. Because he has given each and every one of us a place in the body of Christ. Some may look invisible. There's some of you. I, 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 got, a, I got a text this past week from, from someone that said, Pastor, I want to tell you how much I appreciate what you did. And it was something that from a while back. Because of that, this, this, this and this happened. I've been all week on a, on a spiritual high, and they don't even realize it. Why? Because I know I did my part in the body of Christ. How do we, how do we wrap our mind around how important we are when we've been told our whole life you ain't nothing, you ain't never going to amount to nothing? How, how do we wrap our mind around how can God use me when the devil is constantly throwing those fiery darts in our ear saying, you know what you did. You know your past. If they really only knew who you really are, and you know you got mad and cussed them out yesterday. See, I can't hang around them kind of Christians. Those that won't be real. We all blow it. I said we all blow it. And then the devil will take and he will drag you through the mud when God says you were so invaluable to me that I sent my son to die for you. You are so important to me. You, you, you may be the very one that is out there right now that needs to hear your story. That needs to hear what God's done in your life. That may just need a hug. Of love. I don't know about you, but there's some days I just need a hug. I don't need a scripture. I don't need you to lay hands on me and, and anoint me with oil. Some days I just need a hug. Am I the only one out here? There's some days, some, see, uh, some of you men, I already see you already swelling up back here. Hmm. Not me. Liar. There's time, watch. God created us to be that way, and it's okay. I never forget one time there was a guy to walk in our church, and some of y'all know him if I told you the name, but anyway, he walked in our church, and, and I ran up, and I gave him a big old hug, and that joke went, he said, I don't like preachers, and I especially don't like you. I said, well, good. Welcome to Life Spring today. Me and him are still today best friends. Love him. Why? Because that's that pride thing in men. When God really wants to use you where you work, in the marketplace, he wants to use you. He wants to take the body of Christ and quit doing church and live as the body of Christ. I mean, listen, if everybody was an eye, we'd never get nothing done. And everybody said, if you will stand to your feet this morning. I want you to realize that Jesus said he'll leave the 99 and go after the one. How many in here know somebody that God needs to go after them? I said, how many in here know somebody that God needs to go after them? Well, I'm setting you up now. How many know somebody that God needs to go after them? He's going to use you to do it. He's going to use your hands. 
your feet. He's going to use the love of Christ in your heart to go after them. Everyone in this place is called to the ministry. The moment you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, we were called. And when we're called, he equips us. So quit using the excuse, I can't share my faith with someone because I don't know enough Scripture. Quit giving Scripture and just give love. Quit trying to beat somebody up with a 30-pound demon killer and just wrap your arms around them and tell them Jesus loves you. And you are valuable. So if that's you today, won't you raise your hands and I'm going to ask God today, if you're in unity today, that you know what? I know I got a mission. I am part of the body. Holy Spirit, I guess that you, I ask that you minister through your people today. Those that are here today that says, Pastor, I, I, I know I'm invaluable. And those that right now are doubting, give them understanding and wisdom. But most of all, anoint their hands, anoint their feet, anoint their lips, and most of all, anoint their hearts. Father, break the chains of our past and let us be used by you to reach a dying world for the gospel of Jesus. And today we say amen. And everybody, if you receive that, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I want you to high-five your neighbor and say, you are invaluable. Your presence matters. Your worship matters. So right now, I want you to, if you will, the church, you'll stand to your feet, and let's just throw up a, a worship to God before we leave here today, and let's worship him. Come on, praise team. I'll see y'all Wednesday night. Are you past the point?